and we are live what is up everyone welcome back to the hacks motor twitch channel my name is tyler and i get to be your host this evening so whether you are watching this live as it happens on twitch or maybe you're watching this after the fact on youtube <clears throat> it is an honor for you to take the time to hang out with me and to learn some aws with me i have access to the attacking and defending aws pathway and try hack me for one month and my goal is to work through this entire pathway and to share all the content so that if you don't have access you can still learn the content without paying all the money for it. And maybe you find it awesome and you'll get your employer to uh, buy you the content. But let's go ahead and dive into it without any further ado. I will share my screen. <clears throat> Here we go. And we are going to just pick up where we left off. And we are at the AWS S3 attack and defense. And maybe before we do that, let me just show you guys what we have covered thus far. So let me go to the learning pathway right here. We have covered all of Introduction to AWS, all of Introduction to IAM. If you missed any of this content, you'll be able to find it on my YouTube page. I'm releasing a video literally every day, and each video covers a full module. And today, we are starting this new pathway, or not new pathway, new module, Attacking and Defending Core Services, and we are beginning with S3 Attack and Defense. So probably more hands-on, more lab-type stuff, so it should be fun. And uh, as usual, I have not done this before. I have not prepped it. This is me working through it live and making silly mistakes and everything. So let's dive into it. S3, a versatile service. AWS S3 helps set AWS apart as a powerhouse in cloud computing. Being able to arbitrarily scale data storage and use it in interactions across AWS services has meant that S3 is deeply entangled in how almost all organizations use AWS. However, that power does not come without its own weaknesses. S3 is one of the most commonly abused services in AWS. During this room, you will learn key capabilities and attack surfaces of S3. So what are our learning objectives? Well, we will learn about basic S3 concepts such as Buckets, objects, ACLs, and bucket policies. Students, that's us, will learn about common security issues related to public S3 buckets and how S3 buckets are used in automation. Finally, students will use this knowledge to attack an S3 bucket, exfiltrating data, and using the data to further compromise an organization. Let's go. Accessing the environment, I already spun up my cloud environment, so we should be good. Service overview. Bucket and object. Before we start off attacking S3 or other cloud services, it's important to understand that you're not attacking a typical server or workstation for an organization. The analogies of such systems would be incomplete or inaccurate, as S3 is a custom developed service offered by AWS. I believe Azure has a similar thing called blob storage. Uh, specifically, S3 serves as an object or file storage system. Customers can place arbitrary files as large as five terabytes within an S3 bucket. Directory structure. While an S3 bucket is a file storage system, it has a flat file structure unlike most other file storage systems. This means a standard Unix POSIX behavior associated with file directories is not inherently applied inside S3 buckets. However, as noted by AWS, the forward slash character can be used to organize objects in a pseudo hierarchical structure using folders. Objects can be inside folders, nested inside other folders, but buckets cannot be nested inside of other buckets. And you can see a sweet diagram of that right there. Object durability. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the text a little bit better. S3 is one of the largest holistic data stores on Earth. Such a large data store needs to have guarantees about how trustworthy it is with regard to maintaining stored data. AWS claims that S3 has a durability of 99 to a bunch of nines. This means that AWS only loses one out of every 100 billion objects that are stored in S3. So if you're really unlucky, that's you. Although with over 100 trillion objects stored globally, S3 still loses roughly 1,000 objects per year. And looking over the chat, what up, Pat XA? Good to have you here. Access controls. S3 object permissions also work differently than standard Unix POSIX or NTFS-based file systems. Permissions to S3 objects consist of a variety of API methods, which can be restricted using IAM and or resource-based policies. You can learn more about IAM and resource-based policies in the AWS Basic Concepts Room. We have recovered that. If you missed that video, watch it on my YouTube channel. The critical permissions associated with S3 objects include S3 get object and S3 put object. So download and upload. These are equivalent to read and write permissions respectively. Such permissions can be applied to individual objects, a folder, or an entire bucket. Other controls. In, in relation to S3, there are two additional controls that affect S3 bucket objects. The first is a concept known as object versioning. 
If enabled, uploading a new version of a file will not overwrite the original file, but rather preserves a new version of the file for every version uploaded. This can become costly over time, but may be an important security control when using S3 to store automation scripts and other source code. In such situations, versioning serves as a type of source code pinning and may prevent an attacker from replacing the source code depending on the attacker's permissions. The second is a concept we are all likely familiar with, encryption. While we have a separate room that covers AWS encryption in depth, it's important to note that S3 is commonly used with default encryption. This means frequently an attacker will need permissions to use a relevant encryption key in order to read the plain text objects stored in S3 buckets. In most configurations, this won't be a real hurdle for attackers, but it is important to note that S3 buckets are commonly encrypted by default. Access control lists or ACLs. ACLs are the original method for controlling access to S3 buckets. In fact, S3 ACLs predate the AWS IAM service altogether. A bucket automatically generates an ACL for the bucket on creation that provides a resource owner with full permissions against the bucket. However, ACLs can be added to expand access to other AWS IAM principles, including AWS services, third parties, to AWS accounts, and even unauthenticated users simply browsing the internet. An ACL might look similar to the following. So let's check this out. We have our access control policy, and it's just specifying the resource in AWS, the owner, owner ID there, the display name, and that's just the owner tag right there in JSON format. And if we continue to look down here, we have the grant, and that's to the user, and there's the user, and that's the grantee. So it's granting the user right here, who I believe is the same as the owner, full control over the bucket. In this example, the ACL grants will control access to that user. A canonical user ID is an AWS internal reference ID for any AWS IAM principle. In this case, a canon canonical user ID translates to a root account user with the display name wlad at tryhackme.com. You can find your canonical user ID using these instructions from AWS. Let's see. Let's just use the council. Oh, not the council. I meant the CLI. All right, let's give this a shot. There we go. There's ours. As you can see, S3 ACLs are not very human reader friendly. AWS improved on ACLs with the bucket policy. And since November of 2021, AWS has recommended that S3 bucket owners disable ACLs. However, the majority of S3 buckets likely predate the ability to disable S3 ACLs and are therefore likely to still be enabled. S3 ACLs also create one of the lesser known security risks in relation to AWS IAM. While any authenticated AWS user is not an AWS IAM principal, it is a supported group that can be provision access in an S3 bucket. In fact, companies such as Shopify have been directly impacted by abuse of this excessive permission. Let's check that out. And here, I don't know if you guys are new to bug bounties or pen testing in general, HackerOne's an incredible resource because you can read real reports from real users on major applications and help you learn to think like an attacker. So this is from 2015. It says some of Shopify's S3 buckets were inadvertently left with any authenticated AWS user read or write permissions, allowing users outside of Shopify to access the buckets. Okay, so what this would mean is you would need to have an AWS account, but you could have any AWS account and you'd likely be able to access the buckets. And look, they got a thousand dollar bounty for that one uh, little find. So cool stuff. Over time, AWS uh, de de developed and released the bucket policy capability. Bucket policies are similar to ACLs. They allow you to control access to S3 buckets, but they follow a more human readable syntax. For this reason, bucket policies are preferred. Notably, S3 bucket policies are the first instance of what became known as resource-based policies. Whereas identity-based permissions in AWS are tied to an IAM principle, resource-based policies permit direct access to the attached resource. Right? If this is a test, the teacher probably say this is going to be on the quiz. This means that if a policy allows global read and write access, then you would not need AWS creds to view the data in the bucket or even add new files to the bucket. Such a policy takes the following form. All right. So we can see the description there is public read. It's allowed. What principle? Well, it's a wild card, which means this is all. And what can they do? Well, they can get the object, they can read, and they can put object, they can write, they can upload to it. And what resources it apply to? Well, it applies to everything in the my bucket, hence the wild card. All right, what is the name of the file storage container where you keep your data in S3? 
Is it just bucket? Is that what they're looking for? Yeah. What characteristics makes bucket policies preferable to ACLs and S3? Human readable syntax, right? Boom. CloudFront overview. CloudFront security. CloudFront is the AWS content distribution network offering. We originally introduced CDNs in the AWS Cloud 101 Task 5 room. For those who didn't go through it, which we did, a CDN is a set of servers distributed around the world and designed to intelligently cache customer content to improve end user experience. This allows websites to confidently scale traffic by offloading the service of content that is static or unlikely to change. In addition to providing latency improvements for end users, CloudFront has a number of capabilities that enhance the security of CloudFront hosted resources. For instance, CloudFront can be used to replace geo restrictions on access to specific content. CloudFront can also enforce authorization based on request signature so that users must authenticate to view sensitive data hosted by CloudFront. Furthermore, CloudFront can go so far as to encrypt specific data fields so that only systems with appropriate rights can unencrypt the field level data. CloudFront also integrates with AWS Web Application Firewall and AWS Shield slash Shield Advanced Distribution Denial of Service Protections. These capabilities allow standard protections to be applied to CloudFront origins with minimal configuration. Looking over the chat, Guitarware said, thank you for making this content. Hey, thank you for hanging out. I'm glad uh, there's at least a handful of people who are finding this helpful. I know since most people don't have access to this pathway, I want to go through all of it so that this can be kind of a resource that you can watch these videos back. And although you can't do it yourselves, it's kind of like we're sitting down together and working through the content together. And I'm still an AWS noob as well, so I'm learning as I do this. All right, CloudFront origins are the resource to be hosted behind CloudFront. You might use an EC2 instance or a VM as CloudFront origin and point to the IP address of that. Similarly, you may store static files in an S3 bucket and serve those files from CloudFront. While many, comp while many companies set up dedicated servers and buckets for hosting public content, it's not uncommon to find S3 buckets with mixed use, hosting public and private content. After all, S3 buckets are a great place to store data of all types. If you're able to find such a mixed use bucket as an origin behind a CloudFront distribution, you may be able to pilfer the bucket for interesting information and or additional access. Well, not the only thing that might be served behind CloudFront, S3 buckets are a common choice. And so, we have this developer and he is throwing data into the S3 bucket. And it, of course, as an HTTP or a web service, and it's behind this Amazon CloudFront distribution. So anyone, depending on the location, are able to get it uh, with low latency in the location. And then we have our edge locations here. You see the different areas. All right, what are CloudFront origins? Well, they is where the data is stored. I just don't know what uh, answer it's looking for. Do, 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 do. The resource to be hosted behind CloudFront. The resource, the resource hosted behind CloudFront. Oh, sweet. I didn't think that was going to be right. All right. Lab, identify and misconfigured CloudFront distributions. Let's do it. Let's get into a lab. CloudFront origins and bypassing CloudFront distributions. While CloudFront does a fantastic job of caching and serving static content to your users over the internet, there has to be some initial source of that content or what is known as a CloudFront origin. That's what we just talked about. CloudFront origins, and let's just, let's look at our thing right here. Uh, this would be, well, let's see, CloudFront origin would be back here. Maybe it's not in our diagram. It's where the actual data is initially, right? CloudFront origins may point at EC2 instances, S3 buckets, API gateway endpoints, elastic load balancers, or a variety of other AWS service capabilities. When using CloudFront, AWS expects a customer to restrict access to such origins using resource-based policy restrictions or security group firewall rules. And looking over the chat, Fixit42 just raided us uh, with a few people. Welcome, my friends. We are working through the attacking and defending AWS pathway and try hack me, business exclusive, but I have access for one month. So I'm sharing all of the content free and we're going through it in its entirety for those who don't have access to it. All right, let's dive right back in. When properly restricted, only the CloudFront distribution has permission to talk to the backend service or resource and all users must communicate with the CloudFront distribution. Unfortunately, 
Many customers are not aware or do not properly configure such origin access identities, and it is common to find CloudFront origins that can be accessed directly, bypassing presumed security controls implemented with CloudFront and exposing additional opportunities for content discovery. An origin access identity means that only a specific CloudFront resource will be able to access an S3 bucket behind the CloudFront origin. This would be performed by putting the CloudFront OAI in the bucket policy for the S3 bucket similar to below. All right, so let's see if we can read this. The effect is allow. What principle is it applying to? Well, we have this principle right here, CloudFront user, CloudFront origin access identity. So that's how you specify the origin access identity. And what's the action? Well, the action is get object, which means it can read. And what resource is this applying to? Well, it's applying to our bucket right there. This policy only allows the CloudFront OIA right there uh, to perform get requests against the bucket. Once this has been configured, users will not be able to directly access the S3 bucket. They have no other choice but to go through that. Therefore, the security applies. How can you find misconfigured CloudFront origins? Well, it can be a bit of a guesswork, but once you've identified that CloudFront is the host for content you've identified, then you can attempt to identify the hosted resource. Try Hack Me has an entire room dedicated to learning about subdomain enumeration and DNS reconnaissance. If you are unfamiliar with this technique, then you should go review that room. Knowing the domain name, we begin by trying to determine where the domain is hosted using our DNS reconnaissance technique, which who is dig, I'm guessing that is what it's gonna be doing. Are we supposed to be doing this right now? Or maybe it's just giving us examples. Uh, certificate transparency logs. Cert.sh is one of many public sources where you can identify certificates for DNS domains that are logged. This commonly allows you to identify many subdomains and other domains associated with a particular domain via SSL and TLS certs. When we search for bestcloudcompany.org, we find a number of records. It appears that at least one subdomain exists for bestcompanycloud.org. Is this a real thing? Let's look it up. Well, we'll do it in this window right here. This bestcompany.org website. Because maybe this is what we're using for the lab and maybe we're supposed to be following along, possibly. Oh, let's try that again. Okay, yeah. So bestcloudcompany.org is real and we do find a bunch of different resources here. It appears that at least one subdomain exists for bestcompanycloud.org. So they have assets there. Um, you can see assets over here, matching identifiers, common name. We have this dev portal. We have assets down here. We have these numbers down here, which is interesting. Okay, analyzing holes for certificate transparency logs. Using the known domains and subdomains, you should perform DNS lookups to identify the host system uh, for these resources. So let's go ahead and do that. We have our terminal right here. And we'll do NS lookup. And yeah, all seems to match. It looks like the best company cloud.org is hosted here. Uh, from there, we are able to see it appears that the IP address resolves to an EC2 instance based on the non-authoritative DNS response. Performing a similar check for assets, you should see something similar to the following response. And then you can see them all right there. So different EC2s, it would appear. There's just different IPs, but it shouldn't matter. And then they're doing an NS lookup on one of the IPs. Fix it said, I have to go to sleep. Are you saving the vids? Yeah, let me drop my YouTube link. They're not saved to Twitch because Twitch doesn't like my copyrighted music. But if you go to my YouTube page, I'm posting one of these modules every single day. So I'm recording all of these and it's being posted. So if you miss one, just uh, subscribe to me on YouTube and you'll be able to catch it there. And hey, we can see that CloudFront is being used here. I think that's what it's showing to us. And if we really look at any of these, we should be able to identify that. And uh, there we go, more CloudFront information there. 
So what looks like assets is hosted by CloudFront. When we go to assetsbestcompany.org in our browser on the attack box, there's an interesting message on the screen. There's a note and it references this bucket. Could that be the S3 bucket? Well, I don't know. Let's check it out. You guys could actually do this part because it's public. Best cloud company. This is where we'll store site images, etc., to speed up page loading. Once Adam integrates his bucket with the WordPress, come on, freaky. It's always Adam, dude. Once Adam integrates his bucket with the WordPress hosting configurations. Okay, so public S3 buckets naming conventions. One of the first and primary use cases for S3 was to host static content for public websites. Until 2018, a newly created S3 bucket would be publicly available on the internet by default. And you can see why there were so many um, breaches as a result. This means AWS provides a URL that is publicly accessible with the contents of each bucket. The naming conventions for public S3 buckets continue to this day and follow the below pattern. S3... Amazon.aws.com slash bucket slash key for a bucket created in the U.S. East region. And then we have just a bunch of different um, examples of this, depending on the region, I suppose, it's created in. Just reading over it myself. Companies will follow specific naming conventions. So Try Hack Me does it if you ever notice what's hosted in their S3 bucket. So like on Try Hack Me, if you upload a profile picture on Try Hack Me and you right click uh, to view the profile picture, you'll see that it's hosted in an S3 bucket. Now, not all buckets are public. Customers may choose to restrict access to authenticated users or specific IAM principles. But if a bucket is public, you can easily identify the bucket using basic reconnaissance techniques. All right, public S3 bucket search techniques. We have identified a target organization, Best Cloud Company, that we are attempting to infiltrate. And we've identified the privacy website, bestcloudcompany.org. Now it's time time to attempt subdomain enumeration to identify potential targets for attacks. So you could use GoBuster, things like that. Uh, now that we've found the bucket, am I supposed to be looking for the bucket? This is the bucket, right? Aren't you curious if they're hosting anything else interesting in this bucket? Well, though the bucket isn't that large, or am I supposed to find the bucket? I'm not sure. We'll just keep going. How are we going to search through them all in case this was an accident and it's quickly found? This is where you'll want to take advantage of the AWS CLI, which we will explore in the next task. Because search engines, including Google, index the S3 Amazon AWS subdomain, we can attempt to find public S3 buckets related to the best cloud company organization using the following search syntax in Google. All right. Let's put parentheses around it. Well, nothing's coming up for me there. Often, this is one of the easiest ways to validate targets associated with any particular organization. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Google has indexed any S3 buckets for bestcompanycloud.org, and that's what we noticed. Web source inspection. Viewing the source for a web page, you may also find S3 buckets or other hosting services embedded as a source for images and other static content. I just mentioned this about the Try Hack Me profile picture, which, if we just go to Try Hack Me, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. If I go to my profile, and... Maybe, maybe I have to go up here. Open image and new tab. You'll see that my profile picture is hosted in a Try Hack Me S3 bucket. We have Try Hack Me dash images dot S3 Amazon AWS, and then there's my profile picture. So a real, real life example right there on Try Hack Me. And if we view the source code, even of Try Hack Me, it's like if we uh, inspect we can see, we see this assets type stuff. I would assume we'd see if we drilled down into some of these, I'd assume we'd be able to see the S3 bucket. Yeah, here it is. So you can see the S3 bucket here, uh, try hack me S3 and then it's user avatars, etc. So by inspecting or viewing the source code, we can do that same thing. Even further, there are JavaScript scripts embedded and referenced in the page source to indicate other external resources for the site. 
Through these mechanisms, you may find access to additional resources that may not be intended for public access. You can use tools like Link Finder, JSS, and Subj to automate some of this analysis. DNS Recon. Well, it looks like our targeted organization is hosting assets.bestcompany.org in an S3 bucket. Now, what is the name of the bucket? Why don't we just try assets, best company, cloud, S3, Amazon, AWS, like in the example above? Well, why don't I want to make this go away? Go away. Go away. And we can see we have the canonical name here. And yep, they're getting the same information. Now that we f find, found the bucket, aren't you curious if they're hosting anything else interesting in this bucket? Well, though the bucket isn't that large, it could have a few thousand objects. We could actually use CLI to pull it down. Maybe that's what we're gonna do. How are we gonna search through them all in case there's an accident it's quickly found? This is where you wanna take advantage of the CLI. Yeah, many, many orgs use S3 buckets to host websites, public documents, files to the website. Many of these organizations also host sensitive information in S3 buckets. Sometimes a bucket is left public accidentally using the above technique you can still find many such buckets a day for those of you over in the chat even on youtube i just dropped a link you can do this exact thing for free on flaws cloud and flaws 2.cloud a lot of what flaws cloud is is learning how to enumerate s3 buckets so if you want to follow along with this a little bit but without the subscription flaws cloud and flaws 2.cloud are really excellent resources i also have youtube videos of me working through both of those resources on my youtube page all right, what are the two primary methods of identifying public S3 buckets? I don't know. Web source inspection and search engine indexing? I don't know what it's looking for. In the same order they're raised as topics in the task. Search, is it search engine indexing? Search engine indexing. Web, no, that doesn't fit. Maybe it's up here. Is it certificate transparency logs? Gosh, I don't know what the answer is. No, that wouldn't fit either, would it? I'm quite certain it is search engine indexing first, right? S-E-A-R-C-H-E-N-G-I-N-E-I-N-D-E-X-I-N-G. Yeah, so it's search engine indexing and something that's sort of the three words. <laughs> Man, I don't like it when it's questions like this. It says, in the same order that raises topics in the task. Well, the first one, search engine indexing, but I don't know what the second one is because it doesn't fit the three. I assume it would be this, but that's not going to work. It's not DNS recon because it doesn't fit that. <laughs> Dumb question. What do you guys think it is in chat? Any ideas? I mean, obviously, those are the answers, right? Um, what are the two prime methods for identifying public S3 buckets? I'd assume search engine indexing. How are we going to search through them all? Or is it AWS? And then it's like a web page. What up, Rashid? I don't know what the second answer is. It's something dumb. It's 
standby. I have a weird way of getting the answer with a business account. But it might take me a second. Oh, it might take me too long. If anyone has an, a guess of what that answer is, let me know. Obviously, it is search engine indexing is something else, but web page source inspection doesn't fit that. Is it view view the source for a web page doesn't fit that either? It needs to start with three letters. Oh, you're probably right, Rashid. And DNS recon. Maybe you're right. Web page source in inspection and. Wait, no. Hold up. Search engine indexing. Or is it web page? No, that wouldn't fit. Dude, you got it. It's, this is my issue. If anyone from Try Hack Me is watching, like, how we know to put an and there? Because often on Try Hack Me, they don't want an and. Often they just want you to put the two words there. Sometimes there's a comma there. That's the only thing I don't like about <laughs> questions like that but it is what it is what subdomain do we identify by searching certificates at cert.sh and that was of course assets dot best cloud company dot org all right lab attacking public s3 buckets as mentioned a primary use case for s3 is to host public websites while this is intended behavior by AWS design, it hasn't been without significant security breaches at AWS customers. In fact, customers were so commonly leaving sensitive data in open S3 buckets, AWS changed default behavior from allowing any bucket to be made public by default to instituting a public access block on all newly created S3 buckets across AWS customers. This public access block became the default behavior in AWS accounts starting in November 2018. However, the control was not implemented retroactively. Any buckets or associated objects made public prior to November 2018 remain public. Furthermore, customers still make mistakes with S3 bucket permissions in spite of the public access block. Cloud security researcher, that dude, found that in 2021, there were at least 22 publicly disclosed cybersecurity incidents involving public S3 buckets. So go get your bug bounty money and find them. Getting S3 loot. Even though S3 buckets often contain sensitive info, it doesn't mean that everything in a bucket is sensitive. Furthermore, while individual file or object uploads are limited to 5 terabytes, buckets can be arbitrarily large. As an attacker, even if you find an open bucket, you may be searching through a proverbial needle in a haystack. So using AWS Utilities for offense. On your attack box, the AWS CLI comes pre-installed. I This is a new parrot box. I just installed AWS CLI, I think. So yeah, we should be good. If you're using your own machine, you can download and install it, blah, blah, blah. Using AWS CLI, enter the following command and dump the S3 bucket that we have found. So you can see what we're doing. We're doing AWS S3 sync, which kind of means download. And then we need that bucket, which I don't remember what it was because I deleted it. This one, right? I think. And then we'll just say save to the current directory. No sign request. Oh, wait, no, that's not the name of the S3 bucket. It was, uh, we have to grab that other name from it. I think we did NS lookup to get that, right? And I think with this, is this the S3 bucket? Ooh, I got access denied though. The no sign requests, am I not finding the right bucket? Let 
We got the canonical names there. Now that we found the bucket, aren't you curious to the whole same thing? Interesting. Do I need to try one of those different buckets for some reason? Hey y'all in the in the chat, yo, if I'm missing something obvious, let me know. I've always noticed when I'm like on stream, I'll miss obvious things that I don't notice when I'm watching someone else or when I'm offline. Hmm. It's not this. No, that is the bucket. That is definitely the bucket. I can actually see the files that are in the bucket. We can see index.html. We can see media backups. So this is the bucket. Why is my command not working though? Isn't that weird? Do we just need assets? Maybe I don't need the S3 on the end. Let's try this. Hey, there we go. All right, while that downloads, we can go on to our next question. What AWS CLI command can you run to dump an S3 buckets in its entirety? I really don't feel like downloading all of this. Do I need the information? I'm going to go with no. If I need it, I'll download the individual files. All right, AWS service sub sub substrate. I wonder if I download any of them, though. Hold up. I don't think so. Okay, I thought maybe that was a folder. Because if we wanted to download a specific file, like I'll show you guys a few other commands, at least if I get them right. We can go back to our command, and instead of sync, we can do ls. Oh yeah, we don't need that. And if we ls, then we can say, hey, what is what is in this bucket? And like, for example, if we want to look at what's in media, I think this will work. There we go. We can see what's in media. And let's say we want to download CDX at CGA1.jpg. Then we can download that specific file. So that's why I don't, I don't want to download all these files. But if we want to download a specific one. I don't know what those weird errors are. I have something weird with my parent machine it would look like. Skipping file, file does not exist. I'm gonna have to switch back over to my Kali machine maybe. So I don't know what those errors are. It should have downloaded, but it didn't. And we're probably gonna need access to that for the actual lab. Um, so hold up y'all. This is the fun of live streams. I'm going to exit out of this because apparently parrot doesn't want to play nice and I'll go back to share my screen in a moment. I just have to boot up my Kali machine instead. I try to give carrot a shot or parrot, not carrot, <laughs> parrot a shot, but it doesn't feel like playing nice. Something must have been broken with the way I installed the CLI. Although it's kind of hard to not install the CLI right. So something else is broken with my Chrome installer. I have no idea. Just give me one minute. Do, 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 do. All right, almost there.
So I get logged back into try hack me quick and then I'll go back to share my screen. AWS attack and defense. All right, let's see what was going on here. I'll share my screen again. And now we are in Cali. And if we go to our lab here, let's try the same command. We don't need to make a drive. Well, yeah, we'll make it. Let's go to try hack me. Heck was the bucket called? This right there. I don't want to sync it though. I want to LS it again. I just want to see if I can connect to it. Okay, I can. Save it to this location. We'll change the LS to sync, and I'm just curious, like, was it my parrot box or was it something else? Well, it didn't download it. Well, shoot, maybe I'm making that up. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. So what if I try to download that? And we'll save it to current directory. Frick, I have no idea. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Whatever. We'll see if we need to do it. Well, a primary use case for S3 is public websites. AWS intends for customers to use S3 for a variety of use cases on the AWS platform. Cloud formation templates and Lambda functions are stored in S3 by AWS whenever you provision cloud formation or Lambda resources. S3 is used to store cloud trail logs, and if you so choose, CloudWatch logs and a variety of other logs. AWS Athena, of course, weird names because it's AWS, is designed to be used as S3, S3 to perform analytics in association with data stored in S3 buckets. The potential use cases are almost limitless. This sometimes offers unique opportunities to attack other AWS services simply by modifying the resources in a particular S3 bucket. For example, if you're able to modify a cloud formation template stored in S3 bucket, you may be able to trick an end user into deploying malicious resources on your behalf using the cloud formation service. If you find a golden image pipeline, then compromising the base image would lead to a compromised golden image, potentially deploying widely across an organization. This sort of attack chain applies to a variety of AWS services, and given the prevalence of S3 as data storage for other AWS services, it's something you should always consider when you determine you have right access to one or many S3 buckets. Now, let's take a look at the binary file and see what comes of it. I don't want to look at the binary file. What use of S3 means that it can involve more than data exposure only? What use of S3 means, that, oh, it's using other um, services, AWS service substrate. EC2 and S3. EC2 is an AWS virtual service offering and one of AWS's most widely used tasks. Gosh, I'm gonna have to download that S3 bucket, aren't I? Guess I'll just let it do its thing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. While this room is not geared toward teaching you EC2, see the EC2 room, which we will next, EC2 is still going to play an important role in this lab. 
you see that .bin file that you found with the weird file name. It turns out that it is an EC2 virtual machine image known as an Amazon machine image or an AMI. While most organizations will restrict access and deploy purpose-built S3 buckets to store AMIs, Best Cloud Company has decided to store a backup image in the same bucket that hosts the website. I mean, hey, why not? <laughs> it's the same image used to host the non-static resources associated with the company's WordPress site. Now that we've determined the nature of our loot, how do we use it to further access? Well, you can use a following command to restore the image. So, do, 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 do. I might just have to wait because I don't think it has downloaded our image yet. Oh, there it is. You can see it's downloading, hence the stuff on the end. So apparently I just couldn't download them individually. So it probably has, if that's the EC2 that hosted the WordPress site, we can probably find like um, credentials in there in the, in the config file and things like that. We're almost done. Rashid said, is that Ubuntu? No, the other one was Parrot, which is Debian base, and this is Kali. I do have an Ubuntu machine as well. I get bored with different VMs, so I literally just changed my VM, VM up randomly, but as you can see, it doesn't always work well for me because Parrot didn't feel like working. I swear I need, like, elevator music. Those on YouTube can just skip ahead and be like, when is Tyler going to be done downloading this? We're almost done. 1.3 gigs out of 1.4. So close. Watch the download just like fails right here. 1.4 gigs. Come on. Beautiful. There is our Amazon image. So now we want to restore it. And I actually want to type out this full command because it helps build muscle memory. So I know we can copy it, but I'm not going to. AWS EC2, what are we doing? We're going to create, restore, image task, object, object key, and we're going to pass it the object ID, which is this right here, I believe. And the bucket is assets dot best cloud company dot org name and we have to give it a unique name we'll call it hack smarter oh i need to hold up i need to configure my profile i have to stop sharing my screen because i got to pull my creds from try hack me real quick let me uh grab obs and you guys just have to look at my face for a second while i do this to configure your creds if you're following along in AWS, it's very simple. You just type AWS configure, and I'm going to type in my access key ID, my secret access key. I think my default region in AWS is US East 2. Okay, I can go back to share my screen now. And now if we try that command again, uh, the bucket is in the region US East 1. Okay, so if we want to specify a region, we'll do region US East 1. An error occurred. The specified key does not exist. Well, that sucks. Um, this command generates a new Amazon image or AMI from the binary file we found in the S3 bucket. An AMI is another form of virtual machine image similar to OVF. Once we have the newly generated AMI ID, we can recreate the workload and see what we've collected. Well, shoot, what did I do wrong? Does it need to be dot bin? Oh, there we go. I just need to put dot bin. Perfect. All right. Once we have the newly generated AMI ID, we can recreate the workload and see what loot we've created. So to do that, 
Oh, hack smarter. I bet that's Cali Max in the chat. Don't worry, guys. I'm not talking to myself. Uh, AWS EC2 create key pair key name hack smarter query. Is a query really key material? Maybe. This command creates an AWS generated SSH key pair. Once you generate the key, AWS maintains a public key for use with EC2 instances. Take the private key material and add it to your SSH configuration, which we did. We will be using that in a minute. Next, you'll need to find the relevant subnet where you can deploy your instance. Okay. You can use any subnet that has a tag value of subnet A. Oh, there we go. Next, we are going to launch an EC2 instance from the restored AMI. To do that, we'll need to use a security group that allows SSH access in order for us to be able to SSH in the imagery found. You will know that you have the correct security group because the description field will read allow SSH access for try hack me S3 room. Okay, so we know as far as subnets that we can use, these are just tags. We just have one subnet here and it says we can use any subnet with the tag subnet A and I'm pretty sure we're gonna need probably the subnet ID. We'll just, just for good measure, we'll copy all of this and I'm just gonna throw it in my notes. There we go. And now we will get our security group. Okay, so our security group should be labeled what? Uh, you'll know that you have the correct because the description field will read allow SSH access or try hack me S3 room. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Do I need to do a region? There we go. Allow SSH access for try hack me S3 room. And that would be this right here, I think. That's the default VPC security group. So that's description, group name, and IP permissions. Owner ID, IB permissions. Unless it's this whole thing right here. Now, use that security group ID to launch your EC2 instance using the AMI you identified. I just want to point out, guys, like, AWS is so freaking confusing. I mean, just look. Just look. <laughs> No, YouTube video, just look at it. Like, look at this syntax. How does anyone know this syntax without, I don't even know what people do without ChatGPT. How, how, how the heck would you know this syntax, honestly? Unless you're working the CLI every single day. But I mean, it's just so foreign. I feel like I'm speaking another language every time I try to type AWS stuff. So AWS EC2 run instances image ID ID from the restored image. I don't freaking know what that is. You guys remember what the ID was? This right here. Okay. Image ID. Instance type t3a.micro. Subnet ID right here. There's actually a cloud goat scenario that's very similar to this. Let's 
So subnet ID, subnet, security group ID, and then we need the security group. Is it that? Or is there an actual ID with it? Is it this group ID right here? I don't know if it's that group or it's the default BPC security group there. I don't know what group it is. I think it's this one. Like, guys, look at that syntax. <sighs> it drives me crazy. Cali Max had over 300 different teams creating the, created the APIs, and each team created their own naming convention without universal agreement between teams. Thanks, Bezos. He wanted small teams. Seriously. The pizza teams. What did I call the key? I thought that's what I called it. Is that not what I called it? Callie Max, I'm just gonna make you do the rest of AWS training. I'm about to just quit this crap and go back to my normal hacking. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <sighs> Let me know if you guys have any ideas. I don't know what I'm missing. I it says key name as a string. Let's try that. Create key pair. Oh, sure. Maybe list keys. Maybe the region was different when the key was created. That's actually a really good call. Let's check in my command up here. You know what? I think you might be right. No, I try to copy that command. What? I'm just going to call it key right here. <sighs> Diabolical dope, dude. You're the real MVP, bro. Good call noticing that, dude. Really good call. It created it right here. You guys can see we have our AMI. We should have a public... Um, DNS, public IP, private. Usually there's like a public IP that we can SSH into. We can't SSH into a private IP unless I'm supposed to be on the TriHackMe VPN, which I'm not. Maybe I have to jump on their VPN. Oh, well, let's answer these questions. What service uses machine, Amazon machine images and often uses S3 as a storage for their images? I don't know. 
<laughs> what service uses machine images? What is the username for the default WordPress user on the AMI we identified? I can't SSH into it. It doesn't have a public DNS or a public IP. Did I create it in the wrong freaking security group? Or do I need to, do they somehow have their VPN set up with this? I don't think. All right, that's what we're going to do. I'm just, you guys can look at the creds. I don't, I don't even care. Like, log into the environment, literally, for all I care. <laughs> it's not my environment. You have to do it while I'm live on stream, though, because if you watch this on YouTube, the environment won't be around anymore. Just want to figure out where it created this at. So, our region, yep. Uh, U.S. East 1 is where all these resources are being created at. And let's go to our EC2. All right, here's our instance right here. There's the public IP, right? I don't know why it didn't give me that information previously. So let's take that public IP. Did I miss it? Is it on here and I just missed it? Maybe I was supposed to describe instances or something, but all right. I don't know the name. I think they use a default name for AWS. EC2 user. Bitnami. How did you know it was Bitnami, Calimax? What did I miss? I'd assume it's EC2 user, but how do, how do you know it's Bitnami? I know you already did this. I'm just curious what pieces of information I missed. Because the way I would do it is I would guess EC2 user at, oh, it's a default for WordPress. Is that, that's what you're saying. So you just Googled that, I suppose. I'm going to try EC2 user, even though I, I don't think it'll work because you already did this. Oh, I need to set my permissions though. <laughs> it is Bitnami. So if we go default How would you know it's Bitnami? Oh, is it like for, for AWS WordPress? <clears throat> so it's, it's, AWS WordPress specific, it looks like. So for that answer, you just have to Google around and find Bitnami. But that doesn't even fit that. Oops. User. Oh, 
was the password for the default user of user? It's right there. What is a flag in the WordPress profile of the user? Secure us all in here. That's just the index it works. Yeah, it's a freaking. Is it, are the creds in here as well? This is often a place where you can also find creds. We have some logged in keys, they're encrypted. We have the database password, Bitnami WordPress. You can usually decrypt those with uh, like Hashcat. Uh, but we want to know. The flag of the WordPress profile, we have to log into it. Yeah, I suppose we have to log into it. And that's on WP login.php page. I bet if I actually log into the dude. So was best cloud company dot org set the website. Is this the flag? Hey. Oh my goodness, it took me longer than I thought. S3 summary, S3 is a critical service for AWS customers, and as you see, compromising S3 can have devastating consequences. During this room, you've learned about the key concepts and terms associated with S3, surveying common security weaknesses associated with the use of S3, we gain an understanding of how attackers may use S3, culminating in our own abuse of S3 and compromise of WordPress database credentials. And what you've learned, guys, is AWS... It's so confusing. The syntax makes very little sense to me. <laughs> I say this, whether it's try hack me or cloud goat, I'm always left just scratching my head. Like how does anyone, how does anyone know the syntax? And maybe it's less about knowing the syntax and more about just understanding the big picture and how this can be done. But man, it's, it's very, very, very confusing, at least to me. So if you're confused watching this, just know that we are in the same boat. I'm also confused, but complete. Congratulations. We have completed the room. Share it with your friends. You guys are my only friends, so you know that I completed the room. At this time, I'm going to sign off with those of you on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, check the next video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.